coming. We did not expect this interest. We are simply facilitators and will not be speaking very much, so this is all about you guys and collaborating. Uh, we are trying to solve a coordination problem by having this workshop. <laughs> Okay, cool. Should we get started? Yeah? Okay. Um, so as Eva said, we're just going to talk for a brief second to give you an intro to why we put on this workshop, why we're giving you guys the space to talk, a little bit on our thoughts, and then um, how the session is going to go. Um, so if you don't know where you are, this is um, a workshop on DAOs. Um, it's titled Beyond DAOs, Evolving Hu uh, Human Organization. Um, so we're going to be talking all things DAOs and everything wonderful and horrible about them. Um, so, as I said, we're just going to run really quickly, maybe 10 to 15 minutes. Um, the format of the session is a workshop, so we're going to have you guys working with each other. Um, it's something that you can come in and out of, but it would be great for you guys to stay the whole session. It's an hour and a half, so it's not too long. Um, we promise that it will probably be okay. <laughs> okay, so let's just start off with why we're holding this session. Uh, so, even I think that DAOs can be more than multi-six, um, and that's... Probably, I mean, I hope not a hot take, um, but DAOs are representing this really cool um, thing uh, that we're all talking about. I mean, that's why we're all in the room here today, because uh, this is something that is really interesting, but also like really big. Um, so, the uh, what inspired this workshop? Um, so, I guess I wanted to go through why we think DAOs can be more than multi sigs and from our observation in the space. Um, what we really think is happening, and pitch that to you guys, see what you think, um, and then we can have a conversation about it. So, um, we believe that the hegemonic approach to human coordination uh, is being challenged as those underserved and disempowered by the current system search for more open, adaptable, and representative solutions. Um, so, with the emergence of DAOs, this weird thing that we're all building, uh, decentralized governance um, and token engineering, we now have this new design space to re-engineer incentives and mechanisms, and that's really cool. Um, but the word DAO kind of sucks. I mean, really sucks. Um, it kind of means all of these different things that don't really line up, um, and so it causes a lot of confusion. It causes a lot of um, inability to work with each other, um, and it causes this whole space to be completely not accessible to anybody who could actually use this technology to solve their problems, these people who are being dis uh, disempowered um, and underserved by our traditional power structures, right? So um, this is just a little bit of you know the DAOs that are in the space. Um, we have everything from grant DAOs to people solving climate change with DAOs to people helping political candidates um, mean themselves with <laughs> to the office. Um, and so there's a lot of different things happening, um, and it's kind of a lot to handle. Um, but one resounding thing that is kind of connecting all of these is that they're kind of envisioning this new way of organization, right? Um, one that uh, wants sustainability over profit, um, regeneration instead of scarcity, um, and more cooperative, distributed ways of organizing and working over hierarchical, did I say that right, uh, and centralized ways of working. Um, and this is really fucking cool. Um, this is something that, <laughs> hey, I'm like serious, I like this stuff. This is what a lot of people have been working towards for a very long time. Um, so this isn't new to just the people in this room. Uh, this is um, very new to us, but it's not new to everybody outside this room, is what I was meant to say. So this is a really cool vision, right? This is a very counter-hegemonic uh, approach to organization that could serve and empower the people who are being disempowered uh, and underserved right now. So, even I wanted to get this space to start talking how we can evolve beyond DAOs, beyond this weird little thing that we all really <laughs> like talking about. Um, and how do we start getting towards that vision of sustainable, regenerative, um, uh, and cooperative organizations, right? Um, and so we believe that there's three things that we need to make that happen. One is collaboration. This is something that cannot be done alone. That's quite obvious. The second is accessibility. Um, so this cannot just be accessible to the people who can come out to Osaka, Japan for DevCon. This should be something that uh, anybody can access and build with. And, um, and also common ground. Um, we kind of have to get on the same page about what we're building. And what's really cool is that most of the workshops on DAOs at DevCon have been around the same concept of how are we getting um, 
working within the same language, within the same frameworks. Um, and that's super, super important for our evolutionary process. Um, so yeah, that's the basis for this workshop. Eva's going to take it and tell you how we're trying to provide the space to start approaching that counter-hegemonic vision, um, and we can go from there. Thank you, Abby. Um, so one of the biggest criticisms I have with Ethereum is that we talk about these buzzwords like DAO without thinking about why. Um, you know, it might just boost our cloud or ICO, but we haven't really thought about how to apply it into, like Abby said, outside of this room and to Web2. So people who don't know the word DAO and the people who will never care about the word DAO. Um, and so the best way we thought to do this was to collaborate and have people share their learnings. We have several DAOs represented here or people working on them. And aside from Twitter, there's not a lot of collaboration. Um, and so this in itself was trying to solve a coordination problem by allowing for that collaboration and talking more about how do we make it more accessible um, and what should we be thinking about in terms of common ground as a tool set? So, you know, DAO itself is not a thing, but, you know, things like co-ops and savings groups have existed for a while. And so how do DAOs play into a larger ecosystem of organization types outside of just this Ethereum buzzword? Um, and so we have a few prompts here, um, and I'll go through them exactly what we think you guys should be talking about. Um, our goal would be if you guys could separate into six groups, and so we have on the walls uh, each of these prompts, and if there are people who don't want to work on the prompts, that's fine. Um, we also recognize this room is massive right now, so if it makes more sense to do it all together, we can do that, although that might be harder, and we probably won't get through all of them. Um, but I can start going through them. So here's a, here's a prompt that's our own whiteboard. Um, so firstly, why DAOs? Why are we here in the first place? Why do we think these are different organization types than, like I mentioned, co-ops or savings groups or credit unions? And if they're not different, then how can we start collaborating more with the history that has uh, existed with uh, you know, experimentation globally in different kinds of developing and developed nations? To DAO or not to DAO? Um, so a lot of people like to now include the word DAO in everything. Um, <laughs> Uh, I would say that it's not always the best use case, and so we want to pin down when is it not right to use a DAO, um, and really think about why are we saying the word DAO, is it simply for cloud, or does it actually provide a tool set for us that can improve the way that we organize? DAO toolkit, so aside from the technical infrastructure, what other components are necessary for us to achieve this? So, you know, companies like Open Law are doing a lot of innovation around the legal structure. Uh, what other business structures should we have? Um, are we you know, using the same social tools like Discord, et cetera? And if so, that's awesome. But maybe we should be uh, more pinpointed on how we actually need those. You know, There's like a lot of controversy on leadership or project management within a DAO, and you still need those Web2 tools to achieve the organization that we want within a DAO. Uh, so governing DAOs, uh, how are they different from the existing structures? You know, do we need identity <laughs> solutions? What other components do we need to make them successful? Um, outside of the civil attack problem, what other problems exist within DAOs and how can we solve them? Experimentation. So as I mentioned, there's a lot of people here who are either making DAOs or part of DAOs, and it would be great for everyone to share their learnings. And so uh, something we learned in Malik is like, a lot of people are participating in a lot of different DAOs, but without a fundamental like, uh, I guess like shelling point to communicate that, we actually aren't sharing a lot of information. DAO flavors, so uh, I guess piggybacking a little on the taxonomy DAO workshop earlier today, what are the components of different kinds of DAOs? Uh, what are the different kinds of DAOs? What are the features that DAOs should have to be successful? Um, and maybe there's people here who are part of that workshop that, that would be great to have you guys participate in that. Um, but defining more so the lines between different DAO types might make it easier for us to identify what is a DAO outside of this vague term. Cool, so um, those prompts were created by Eve and I, but also pushed out to the general community and a bunch of Twitter shit posting that we've been doing. Um, and so we've actually built out those prompts with a lot more like guiding questions that can be used to uh, lead the groups. Um, and you'll be able to find those on uh, the HackMD page and the Excel sheet. Um, but so uh, we don't just want you guys to just jump in and like have discussions. We want this to be something that is actionable and so we can pull out these insights and actually apply them back to the community. So what do we want from you, right? So first we want you guys to capture and share the key insights from your discussion groups um, uh, through collaborative note sharing. 
Um, uh, so, and then actually share, work together, obviously, uh, and play nicely and uh, engage with each other. Um, and then uh, we want you guys to present those insights to each other. So we want this to be a quick breakout session where um, you know people dive into each of these prompts um, and then come back together and share these insights. So that means that we're going to have to have uh, one group leader for each group. Uh, and one person who's taking notes. Um, and those are the two people, so I can't wait to see all those hands volunteer for the groups. That's gonna be really great. Um, and then, th I guess the guiding framework for like what we want out of this session, because it's so hard to dive into all of these big topics and have structured conversation, is more of a proposal for frameworks, deliverables, and continued work that can come out of this workshop, that can be worked on with each other, with different groups, and then again, push back to the community so we can be evolving together. This work only begins here. This is not something that we believe will you know, stop when it exits this room. Our goal is just to create space for people to come together and have these discussions. Um, and also, we just want you guys to take inspiration and use this as a launch base for more collaborative discussions around DAOs. As Eva said, we have tons of people who are representing the different uh, <laughs> you know, DAO groups, DAO builders. Um, DAOs in general here in this room. So take this time to you know kind of break down those project silos um, and have uh, conversations that uh, in real life, not just over Twitter, which is really important. Um, so uh, to talk about logistics, and then I'll take a couple questions um, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Um, we're actually going to be doing our note sharing. If anybody didn't know, we have this like HackMD for DevCon. Um, this is a QR code to get it, or you can just find it through the DevCon app. Um, and we've actually set up the document with all of the different uh, group categories. Um, this is the link uh, when we didn't think that we would have slides. Um, and so this is where we're going to be taking our notes um, and sharing insights, and this will be accessible by everybody. And again, whoever is volunteering to take notes, do this in the HackMD. That would be great. So, about the group. Okay, so to go back to the original question, we have a really big group of people here. Um, so I want to do a quick check on if people would rather these small working groups where you split into corners um, or a larger group discussion that even I facilitate um, and, and work through each of the problems. So who wants working groups? Raise your hands. Hi. Raise my Yeah, really high. Okay. Okay, now who wants a larger group discussion? Guys, it's about half. <laughs> Does anybody want to make the case for one or the other? <laughs> what? <laughs> that in itself is the case for working group. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Guys, I think we're gonna go with groups. Okay. Also. Also. Also, I mean, if, if a group forms and wants to go somewhere else, if you tell what time we come back, I mean, there, there's more space than this room for working groups. Thank you. Can I just mention that, yeah, just as he said, you don't have to work physically here because this is all on HackMD, we'll see all of it. And our goal is to publish all of this as a collaborative effort on some uh, medium of choice. Uh, with all of your notes, and also the frameworks or deliverables that you guys create on how to make these easier. Can you show uh, the before again? I don't understand what government DAOs are. So, so basically, DAO itself, you know, a decentralized organization is not new. We think it's new because we have this new fun thing called a smart contract that allows decentralized coordination. We want to better understand what are the differences and similarities between things like co-ops, savings groups, credit unions, etc., that are very parallel to grant DAOs or, uh, you know, Aragon DAOs, etc. Um, and how, you know, what are the tools that we need now to make those uh, easier, given that we have this new technology stack that we're using. All of these prompts are on this Excel sheet that you can also access through the HackMD document. So if you want more information on the prompts, you can find them here. So I think that we're going to do... Yeah. So yeah, there's stickers on the wall. Um, for the groups um, by your prompt. Um, but if you don't want to be in this room, as it is quite packed, as our moderator said, you can leave and then come back. Um, I think uh, coming back at 4.30 would make sense. We wanted half an hour at the end for uh, discussion and presentation. Um, yeah. So let's everybody take the time now, coordinate like the amazing distributed people that you are, um, and find yourself into one of these six prompts. If you have another prompt and you have a group around you and you want to talk about something else, go ahead. But now is the time.
As mentioned, all the information is on the hand empty. All right, guys, let's wrap it up. Um, quick thing, if you can add as many attendees, so if you were in the room, can you add your name to the lab MD so we know who's going to Um, sharing the insights, thoughts, um, general discussion points um, that they think is really important for every other group to hear. So I want every group to nominate one person. That person is going to come up here to the microphone uh, and have the full attention of the room. So we're going to do that for each group. I think we ended up only having five groups. Um, so again, this will be probably like 20, 25 minutes. We'd love for everybody to stay to hear all the insights. Um, and then that's it, okay? Great. Any questions? No. Okay, so who wants to start first or should we start one through six? Uh, inverse six. Inverse six. <laughs> six, you want to go first? Yeah. Alright, who's coming up? Announce yourself. Hi, I'm James. Okay, well, I, I thought I was going to go. Are you part of the James now? Um, so, ours was, ours was about the flavors of DAOs. Um, we basically just tried to go through and think of all the characteristics, um, you know, that could be on off switches or could be scales or sort of about velocities. Um, and so, these different points that make up uh, the, the flavors of a DAO. The first one was the permissionlessness of it. Right? Is, the, is it purposely really open and, and permission, or is it you know for managing funds for close knit group of people and the permissionlessness of it? The second one is it, is it for profit slash for sustainability slash not at all and just doing grants, right? And so where does a given DAO set on that parameter? Um, the next one was around the number of members 
So how many people, you know, again, purposely as small as a large, is it meant to scale to a million people or is it only meant to be five? Um, the next one that was pretty key was the fund allocation. So is it, you know, is, is the point of it just to deploy capital um, in different ways or is it how to govern, you know, what colour to paint my mum's house? Um, the next one was, oh, is the token or not token, right? So that was something I came up with again and wrote down. Um, but, you know, is it, does it have a token inside of it? Is that the point to it or is there not at all and it, it doesn't require it? Um, the other thing, oh, was is it focused on sort of like um, people and open access and um, creating a better world almost? Um, or does it have sort of like hard coded in it um, what, are the, what the point of it is, right? So it should never change and just stay like this or it should develop over time. You know, that sort of immutability of the data was another one of the flavors. Uh, and, then, uh, and then one of the things we talked through was going through um, Dowsat, Colony, Aragon, Pan Panvala, nice, um, and then sort of the Molot Forks and what all those flavors. Um, I don't want to do everyone else's, I can sort of do the, no, it doesn't matter. Those will be on, on the Hack MD. Um, at the, so, yeah, the calls were those sort of six different pieces of the puzzle, um, and then also the, the, the uh, different companies and sort of how their all works. Nice. Cool. Uh, yeah, anybody have any questions? Anybody want to ask anything for this group? Uh, or add? Oh. Nope. Yeah, hey, what do you plan on for next steps? What's that? Did you, did you plan on anything for next steps? Oh, jeez. Now you've got a spot. Um, I think next steps for the different uh, the flavors of the DAO, I mean, I think we're going to get them up on HackMD, maybe sort of expanding out these flavors. I think, I mean, no one wants to ask a question now, but I'm pretty sure there's other flavors and other attributes that make up a DAO. Um, so contributing to them, I think, would be really useful in sort of building out this list of, and, and then also putting back to the community, right? Because I think there's a lot of community members that aren't in this room um, that actually care a lot about DAOs and sort of understanding how um, at least the people who are in the room are thinking about these ideas and thinking about the different flavors and attributes that make up a DAO is really important. So I would encourage you to go to the hacking day as well and uh, contribute to the discussion and build out these flavors. Nice. We had one question. Oh, okay. yeah. That, that's not a question, but a comment. Because okay. I, I have like a crazy idea uh, that you could build DAO around like a state you have in the DAO around crazy things. Like for example, proof of presence or like anything else that um, it's important for the given community. So, for example, don't have a, a, as much say about things related to uh, a thing as many times you attended conferences related to that thing. Maybe that's not, not the best measure, but you can come up with better measures. So that ha doesn't have to to be like a value token. It doesn't have to be. Well, it's monetary. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Thanks. Nice. Agreed. Uh, that's good. Okay. Yeah. Experimentation. Who's coming up? Announce yourself. Uh, experimentation. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm Dan Finley. I'm speaking for the experimentation team. Uh, we spoke on, uh, there were like four themes, uh, major topics. There was what have we learned from past experiments or a variety of past DAO creators in the group. Uh, we talked about what we should be cautious of with future endeavors and then also what do we want to do with future endeavors. And then I've got like a little assorted category. So for, for past experiments that were in our group, we had a, a great thread about Gitcoin with their least recent uh, CLR model and you know, so it's based on the quadratic allocation of Vitalik's global capitalism and it uh, may have some uh, questions, open questions about identity verification and things like that, but um, the last round was very successful. In particular, uh, yeah, 2,200 contributions were made and, and they noted, uh, Vivek noted that uh, it seemed that a UX improvement that helped people visualize how their vote was really uh, affecting it, it, it gave this like kind of social media windfall uh, of, of like, enthusiasm and participation, which was really cool to hear about. Um, there was uh, some some uh, conversation about this thing called LibDAO that I hadn't heard about. It was a plasma scaling DAO that uh, it sounded like it had some autonomous reputation enforcement that would penalize people for things as simple as uh, being sick for a week. And so there was kind of this sentiment of like sometimes a DAO you encode things that don't reflect the community sentiment. There did seem to be a group sentiment that uh, if the group had agreed to slash the reputation, this wouldn't seem so bad. But the fact that somebody just didn't vote for a week felt inhumane. Um, there was uh, that's the DAO. Uh, then there was a, there's some other DAO alluded to that had some like private HR issue that is now a public vote. Everybody sees that somebody's going to get fired, and so there's 
question of like how many of these kinds of more human things should be on the chain in general. Um, there's a little bit of conversation about the DAP PS experiment from the antitype hook and status, um, where they're curating uh, DAPs. Uh, it, it was deliberately designed to avoid voting because voter participation is a, you can kind of come back to later as like uh, voter participation part uh, problem. Um, and then we're talking about uh, what you should be cautious of when building DAOs. Actually, we have one major thread that kind of uh, dominated here. There was like a question of, it was like politics versus autonomy, and, and it kind of ties back into like just the theme of autonomy. You know, when we're defining DAO, like auto autonomous is a letter in the word, and uh, how important is that into it? Uh, you know, there was like a you know, testimony from a you know, well, if I, I know everybody, if I'm the founder, I can pretty, I know how to hustle the votes and, and get an initiative passed. And, uh, some people might not want to be a part of a DAO that uh, is like that. And there was kind of a conversation about well, DAOs are going to have strong or weak cultures. Uh, and uh, yeah, maybe the trust minimization in these systems comes from transparency, not the lack of trust systems. Um, so that's, that's, those were the experiments. We had a, another thread about uh, what we should be cautious about. Oh, sorry, that was that was what we should be cautious about. <laughs> politics. Uh, yeah. So, can we avoid politics, or is that intrinsic to? I think that was an interesting conversation. And uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, ask, ask yourselves that. And uh, what can we experiment with besides DAOs? Uh, there was a so, for one thing, a DAO is a set of mechanisms. They can be coupled with norms in a community. Those norms can be self-fulfilling and create feedback loops, right? If you establish some, some norms, like you've got a community that votes one way and they can slash people, like obviously you're gonna create a self-fulfilling kind of community in that way. Uh, one concept, oh, you donate on chain and you get, for every dollar you successfully allocate, you get a token and you help oversee the funds. It sounded a lot like Kanbali, you should talk to them around. <laughs> um, okay, uh, yeah, anyways, there's probably a few guys like that. Um, and then also, what was the last thing? Oh, other thoughts, here's assorted things. Uh, there, oh yeah, the, the whole autonomy thread, can you avoid politics? Uh, more DAOs should think about profiles for users that are participating and gearing the experience towards them. I actually wish I asked for more detail on that because I wasn't clear whether it was like building the experience towards the profiles of people or letting people represent profiles. So we want to give you an indication of that. Yeah. I'm, I'm loosely summarizing that. I didn't fully grok it, sorry. Um, and then, uh, da -da -da. Uh, there can be problems with information asymmetry in DAOs when there's people who are like curating and, and stuff. Like they, they might know what are actually good proposals and stuff. Um, there are costs that are non-monetary. The usage kind of comes back to voting costs. You know, so how do you make decisions? What are the real costs uh, of running the DAO? Um, uh, there was a little taxonomy, uh, kind of similar to what a group one suggested. Like some are uh, fund allocation vehicles and some are decision making or parameter setting DAOs. Uh, uh, Sometimes uh, legal restrictions can play into DAOs, so you can either like bake that into your uh, the incentives and mechanisms that you're considering when designing your DAO, uh, or you can just like copy and paste bylaws from the existing corporate or government structures, and we can basically just have those, but with guaranteed trustless uh, enforcement. There's a little bit of a thread. I think we got a little bit of agreement by the end, where it was like uh, DAOs are kind of just us building rules that are more trustlessly enforced. Uh, it seems like we got kind of loose agreement, but there were there were a couple caveats about whether that some, there was no a DAO cannot have a dictator and no a DAO has its rules enforced trustlessly and transparently. So those are the two big caveats that it isn't just an organization, but it's on chain. Um, voter participation should it should be required? Should be opt in? There's an idea. What if your your lock screen on your phone required you to vote on stuff before you could use it? You know, like uh, uh, and uh, yeah, security tokens. Uh, there was a notion of like maybe you get uh, future revenues for voting. Uh, well, questions about how DAO changes the rules and uh, questions of how do you deal with early members having dominance of reputation in their DAO? So can you, should you decay or is it a good thing to have uh, reputation? I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. Nice. Just kind of. Cool. That was great. Yeah. Any questions or additions to add to that? That was a really comprehensive uh, list. I'm, I'm really excited to read through those. A lot of really good ideas. Yeah. Um, the profiles thing is kind of interesting, Dan. Um, I guess a comment or what I take away from that is like we should definitely have like culture is what brings people together, and so profiles. Our culture is a component of profiles, and so if you have too many heterogeneous uh, people, then it's really hard to actually create culture or like an aligned goal. That's how I'd interpret that. Um, 
great. That's awesome. Yeah, tons of thoughts there. Um, okay, cool. So let's move on to governing DAOs. Governance. Who wants to come? Nice. Hey, announce yourself. Hi. Um, my name is Jason. I'm from Malaysia. And this is John Light. He is from Aragon. Aragon Network. So uh, we have a, a lot of amazing content, okay? Personally, that's what I think, okay, in the last 15 minutes. So um, we talk about governance, okay? Reason being is because if the governance model breaks down, then everything basically fucks over, so. Um, so uh, the first problem, okay, is should governance be on-chain and off-chain? Um, not all should be on-chain, okay? It really depends on, um, what you're looking at, where you draw the line. Uh, incentivization models, for example, okay, should be uh, on, on, a, on a DAO, should be on-chain. Uh, the line is drawn in, based on what the purpose of the DAO is. Uh, a good example that was brought up was Moloch DAO is a good reference to check out. Um, they are very clear line, ETH 2.0 development. Uh, voting should be on-chain and it's a, it should be centered around the shared vision. So the second prompt that we went into was how do we support decentralized governance? Immediately, um, one of the members uh, said that bef before anything else, the interface is very important because the current voting itself already sucks, so we need to make the voting experience uh, much more easier for people to come in. Uh, and some, they said, look at Aragon. Aragon is a good reference to look at. And one of the other members mentioned it would be cool if we have an app, okay, big of build a big community and test the concept. And another member mentioned, um, we need, not only do we need a good interface, we also need uh, a better prompt, how to guide users to make informed decisions. Uh, so, so how we communicate and coordinate so that um, people will participate and it will be meaningful. Then we move on to the third prompt, um, which is, uh, what is the third prompt? Can somebody shout out what's the test governance? How do you test governance? Oh. Yeah, how do you test governance, right? So before we even talk about testing, okay, uh, one member pointed out something very important, which is to first establish what success does look like. Okay, successful governance should match with returns, not necessarily financial returns, but also social well-being returns. The fourth problem that we went into is that uh, um, how much does DAOs look and mirror to corporation models and are there any uh, lessons that we can learn from it. So the in the very short time that we have, there was a lot of examples okay that, that we're trying out that we can refer to. Again, social benefit corporation, donor advisor funds, participatory budgeting, um, like for example what's happening in the US Madrid. Please feel free, that's like all these keywords, keynotes that uh, you can check out later and you can do research on them as well. Uh, the fifth prompt, okay, is when do we need to use identity solutions in a uh, DAO? So uh, what was brought up was whenever there's quadratic funding, okay, or whenever there's one person, one equals one vote, okay, then an identity solution uh, is relevant. Uh, who is working on this? Okay, we brought up identity, okay. Um, one of the members point out that when it comes to identity, it really is the holy grail of this subject matter. Uh, but we still need to continue to work on it with what we have. Uh, another member mentioned that, you know, rather than Facebook giving me an identity, okay, why not we work backwards that a person can basically um, put in the identity that he wants and then fills it up from there rather than having a centralized authority giving the identity. That was a very interesting um, uh, idea, I thought. Uh, why couldn't I just, you know, use IPFS, put my identity on the blockchain and then build it from there? Um, one other member also brought up, okay, no, that, that just a bit right, sorry, no, it's okay. um, identity as one vote, okay, um, can be capitalistic because when that happens, the more you have, the more uh, power you also have in the voting process. Um, what would be interesting but more difficult to actually do is to have identity as one unique person. And as for next steps, John, yeah, yeah uh, great summary. Um, so yeah, some next steps that, that I pulled out, uh, we, didn't, we didn't discuss as a group because uh, we got absorbed into the discussion itself, but, but some next steps I pulled out of, of the discussion um, would be uh, perhaps to 
um, develop a good information curation and discussion methods. So first, you know, facilitating a great way to have discussions around the decisions that DAOs are making, um, but then also to curate that information for people who maybe aren't as engaged in all of the discussions, but who want to contribute to the decision making. Um, uh, Another is uh, delegated voting, so uh, so I think that kind of follows from that, where if somebody isn't able to make an informed decision, they might be able to delegate their vote to somebody who they trust to make a good decision on their behalf. Um, and along these lines, um, uh, it would be good to have a, an easy voting interface that perhaps works with um, maybe all of the different uh, DAO models, um, so people can see you know what DAOs they're a part of and, and vote really easily. I think you're gonna need delegated voting for that so that they can keep their keys offline and then just uh, vote from keys that are on their phone or something. Um, uh, uh, it would be great to have a unique uh, personhood mechanism to enable ID dependent mechanisms like quadratic funding or, or quadratic voting that, we, uh, that he mentioned earlier. Um, so. He mentioned a couple of projects that are working on this, and it would be good to see these like integrated directly with uh, DAO or, or voting mechanisms, uh, so like Bright ID or IDEN3. Um, and then uh, finally, uh, perhaps we could design some like off-the-shelf models that people could use for low-stakes, short-run DAOs, so that we can quickly experiment with governance, um, and most importantly, in a diverse set of communities so that we can see how these tools interact with a bunch of different types of cultures and people from different backgrounds and age groups and so on and so forth in, in, in a way where people don't feel like intimidated by just how much is at stake, but something that could just be like quick and fun. Um, but yeah, I think those would all be pretty cool next steps to take on as a community. I just want to address something you said as a next step, which is an easy interface. And actually, DAO stack has something called Alchemy, which is where all the DAOs um, are housed and you can participate. Um, and also, Vengeance is building something called DAO House, uh, which is where you can access uh, a bunch of the Moloch forks and actually do some of the functions from there instead of uh, like a Moloch site, so something like a rage quit. Um, so we definitely have these things growing in our ecosystem. Nice. Any, any thoughts or questions? where you can access all your DAOs from yeah. all of the things at the same time? Oh, awesome. My DAO dashboard. My DAO there's, dashboard. Yeah, my DAO there's dashboard. an E for Lynn project. And, yeah. they've got and the DAO house is for launching your own mode. Launching and accessing. And accessing. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be cool maybe another one is to list these resources so we can all understand and start coordinating between them. That would be really nice. And that, that, that was mentioned in the, was on your slides on the, bring a yeah. DAO, DAO bit, DAO day, or one bit. Yeah, yeah. So those okay. guys listed all this stuff because maybe we could yeah. yeah, cool. No, in fact, somebody from our team, they talked about having a United DAOs. So imagine that. <laughs> oh my god, nice. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> I like that. Don't say United Nations. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> United Nations. Right? There it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks, guys. It was awesome. Uh, I noticed your group hasn't put your notes into the hack MD. Please do so, so we can capture them. Thank you. Um, go ahead. Should we start a new job to continue with all of this? Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, we still have too far to go before we lose all of our attention. Um, this is so awesome and I'm really enjoying this. So, um, I don't think that the DAO toolkit met, right? Okay, so uh, that one's canceled. Um, so, to DAO or not to DAO? Who talked about ethics? Come on up. Announce yourselves. Um, is this feedback really, really annoying? It? Are you guys good? Okay, cool. We can cut the mic if you need to. Hi everybody, I'm Georgia. Um, so we don't have it in a very kind of cohesive manner, but I'm going to go through and not take too much time. So we were on uh, to, to DAO or not to DAO, and there was some strong opinions both sides in our group. Um, some people very much like DAO is never a solution for anything, all the way up to we should be using it all the time. Um, so I'm going to go through some of the points uh, that we brought up. Um, it was a, a lot around ethical concerns, those were the main problems that we were addressing. Um, and how um, 
you know, uh, governance by vote kind of assumes that voters are informed. So there's an ethical problem with assuming that voters are informed, definitely. Um, when votes are weighted, this could allow for differences and discrepancies in how well a voter is informed as well. Um, so we were looking at um, whether there's an ethical responsibility to impress upon voters that they should be informed as much as possible, as constantly as possible. And so that comes to that information asymmetry, which other people have been talking about already. Um, we talked about accessibility issues, single issue voters, what about people who only care about one thing and are not going to participate in everything else? What does that do? Um, and uh, most people uh, default to inaction. So what happens when we change this model? We, we're insisting that they take action in order to participate. Um, and you know, that goes against a lot of behavioral psychology around how people uh, operate. So what is going to motivate them to take part? Um, and who has the privilege to participate all the time? So if taking part in this DAO involves you to be constantly voting, who are those people who are going to do that? Maybe not the person with two jobs and many kids. So there's some uh, questions there. Um, and then if you think about, well, if we're going to incentivize people to take part, what damage does incentivization do? So, you know, if, you, if, you, if it's about gamification, what are people going to do to win the game? Do they really care then about the activity that they're, uh, that they're involved in, uh, whether they're voting or not? Um, there's a strong um, feeling that um, there's a lack of knowledge generally amongst people building DAOs about the existing literature out there, specifically around um, e-voting and why e-voting is problematic. Um, so uh, I can't remember the name. This guy over here, he's got lots to talk about that, so we're going to talk to him if you want, if you want to learn more about that. Phil. <laughs> Phil. Um, so um, I'm, I'm a user researcher, so I, I care about understanding the needs of users, and I think we should be speaking to people who we're building for to understand their problems and their motivations, rather than just building it and seeing who will come. Um, and that's a, a good way of addressing the ethics there too. Um, so, I, yeah, some other things that we, we sh could look at is, uh, you know, if for communities, small communities, specifically marginalised populations as well, we could be understanding the reasons why people now don't vote. If we could solve that problem, and I understand that and address it, then that could probably then solve for all the people who do also want to vote as well. So you're going to have higher participation then. Um, and also, what, understand why people are voting for the wrong reasons too. Um, so we, there was feeling that the scope of current DAO seems a bit too large, um, and uh, we came to the conclusion that in order for a DAO to really make sense, you need a group of people who have in common a desire to collaborate, cooperate, and have accessibility to do this thing. And if one of these three things is missing, then it's probably not right to have a DAO for it. Um, there is definitely feeling that where a DAO is addressing something really life-changing, where you know, the proposals could mean life or death or significant effects um, for people's lives, we are not ready right now for, to be addressing any of those kind of problems. Um, and thinking about what is the risk to a person who leaves a DAO. You know, um, is there a risk to them in any way too? Um, and uh, yeah, we talked to, uh, just a little bit more about, just because this was brought up, the idea of, you know, like, could you get someone to vote in order to unlock their phone? Well, what we will, might end up doing is in order to incentivize people to take part in DAOs, we could be building in the same uh, manipulative design practices from Web2 applications in order to get people to vote. So there's an ethical question around there as to whether we really want to be doing that. Do we want to um, make it like a game so that people participate if they don't actually really care in the outcomes as well? Um, I think that's about it, but we're going to put our notes in. Thanks. Oh, and everyone in our group needs to put your name on this thing. I'll hand it around. Thank you. Um, so do you have any thoughts on this whole idea of a precautionary principle of 
in what cases is the dollars okay and what cases yeah, so dollars are okay? Yeah, so we really talked about that. We, we came up with the idea that um, small communities around single issues are the best place right now. So uh, particularly groups who can muster around a problem together and solve it that way. So I think there were some uh, examples of like, let's organize access to water for this community, for example, or protect this bit of land. Something which is as a direct um, a direct purpose and is not very contentious. Great. Thanks guys. Any others? Any others? Did I see a hand? No? It would have been a, an answer for a question for setup. I don't know how maybe blockchains are interesting to the social scalability to some extent, and maybe those kind of organizations in small contained communities wouldn't need a blockchain, and maybe you can organize with the face-to-face -face interaction. Yeah. Thank and you. maybe that's an interesting use yeah. case, like yeah, to kind of yeah. take those structures and scale them up for larger well, there was a question that we had in our group, which is, if this is already working effectively within a small community by whatever method they have, then why complicate it by adding a deck? Yeah. Coordination. You trust. trust. You trust. What if they trust each other? Trust is very There's a question of whether, like, you know, we're all building to create the UX of blockchains easier, but are there actual tools that a blockchain can provide uh, to help this community, even if they're doing okay? Like, is there something else that this technology brings that would improve the coordination? It requires behavior change, and behavior change is the hardest thing to get, right, to get people to do. So, uh, right now, the barrier to entry is way too high for yeah. those people. And that's what we should be addressing. Yeah, and maybe finding the use cases and the places yeah. where people are ready to make that behavioral change but not so much focusing on the ones where they're not ready for it yet and analyzing that, which is a really good point to like discuss. Yeah, I got oh, all no, sorry, you want to give it a I saw her, um, yeah, yeah, just, I think tools like Lumio, I don't know how many people are familiar with Lumio, where it's just, um, you know, it's basically an interface for voting. I feel like that's very good for a small, um, small group of people who trust each other and have some um, kind of digital capacities, let's say, or like kind of experience with interfaces. So that still definitely assumes a lot, but I find that like non-blockchain tools that are also very similar to what they would scale up to be are really yeah. good onboarding tools. So I'd always like start with a small group with Lumia before I kind of move on to something that has, you know, gas transactions, etc. But it's a yeah. 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 But it's really good like paper prototyping. And Lumia has another very cool advantage that we actually should really model after. It's not just made for voting, it's made for sense making around the proposal itself. So yeah. the tool is geared, geared around finding a better collective solution than any individual solution. And that could be something we should be thinking about instead of yes, no, binary things. But at the same time, I can argue that no, we should keep it swarm and simple, yes, no, binary things. Yeah, on the about the behavioral change as well, I think a really interesting idea behind that is that when you look at governance right now, like, you know, as, as a space, we try to be pretty, well, as this community at least, we try to be pretty anti, you know, money, 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 let's do that. Um, but I think when you look at governance right now, money plays a huge role, right? You're the US president, you get paid a bajillion dollars, and then you get a bajillion dollars forever, right? For every year of your life. And there's these whole governance structures that have been built up and financed around that. And I think that's from like the Moloch thing, that's what's going on with Peter at the moment, right? Peter's been pushing Moloch for a long time, and only now has he received the first check to, you know, to, for, for actually, well, you got, right? Yeah, that happened. Um, and I think like, that's, that's <laughs> and, that's, and that's really important, right? I think like the people that are coordinating these DAOs and the, the bureaucracy we build into these systems, you know, there needs to be financial backing behind them because otherwise these things won't happen. You know, um, and, and I think right now DAOs don't incentivize people enough to like to get involved. Right. That brings up the interesting question of like, are we actually changing the way that our organizations work? Like, people still need to be paid for the work of even creating or coordinating a DAO, mm -hmm. and we have this like a contrarian view that there's no leaders in DAOs when there are fundamental leaders, and they should also be compensated. Yeah. But then also we have the ability to capture value in different ways yeah. than traditional profit structures, right? So now okay. we also have the opportunity to redesign the incentives, which is really nice because we get to create a new way for people to be uh, rewarded and for to capture work for their labor. Okay. Then why do we call it DAO? I mean, that's why <laughs> I think DAO is not DAO. I, like, I just think that we are using a wrong, wrong name and by calling it DAO, then if we're going to have a person that is going to be leading the efforts, yeah. um, but there's a it's not really decentralized. Yeah. I, I mean, think the leader can change. 
every second. Yeah, yeah. someone has to do something. I know. That's all she's saying. So, the so Moloch is basically going to be very, a lot more autonomous from now on. I wouldn't say it's wrong. Too. What did you say, Sorry. There's a difference between leadership and control. And so you can have yeah, yeah. leadership is informed. That's a great point. I told you recently I had a bunch of shit. And, and, and Manu, I wouldn't say it's like wrong, but, but I agree DAO is a like term that's much broader than what each specific implementation indicates. Right? Each implementation is distinct, sort of, and the community that forms and culture that forms around each implementation, you could describe each as either a company or a co-op or yeah. some sort of, right? DAO, though, is kind of, but, it's yeah. kind of this blanket. Yeah, that's, but it's called decentralized, right? Yeah, no, I agree. There's well, this decentralized and autonomous. Sorry? If you want to be nitpicking, then talking about the autonomous is not making sense either. Yeah, it is. So that's exactly what I'm saying, that we're using the wrong naming convention. That's exactly what I'm saying. The D has more to do with the medium. It's just that it's already stuck. Raise your hand if you want to speak, okay? Let's make this coordinated. There is an element of decentralization that I think sometimes it's grouped into one thing. And, you, know, you can have decentralized financing models and also have some type of leadership. You can have decentralization of leadership, but actual centralization of funding. So I think it's, it's a bit of a uh, kind of misdirect to say if there is leadership, it's not decentralized because we see the same thing like on, on layer one, right? Like you can have decentralized node structures and still have centralization because it's all on AWS or something like that. So I think, I you know, if, if you do say that, it, it needs to be maybe a little more nuanced, but I, I see where you're coming from. Yeah, wait, 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 I saw one right in the Oh, yeah, I see the, the, the letters D and A have more to do with the medium that is floating mm -hmm. yeah. and the structure. And that, that's how it looks. I would also add that like leader doesn't imply that the leader has more decision making power as much as it is who is executing. Like who is taking out the trash doesn't mean they're the ones deciding where the trash is going. Kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I think also we don't have to like to, like compact everything into a DAO, right? We don't need to say that like a participatory or horizontal or collaborative organization has to be a DAO. There's value in these potentially separately. And also, I think we have to, to your point, we also need to acknowledge that like back-end labor happens to like organize and socialize and create the communications around how you implement a DAO or a horizontal organization. We want to honor that labor however we want to do it. Yeah, just, was, just to wrap on this, because I think it, there's, there's, we have a broader problem at hand, which ties, which you're linking to it, is like we are open source based, right? So there are people here that are contributing with work which we cannot remunerate based on the work produced, kind of, right? Because they can't cooperate. So we have to come up. We fucking have to come up with a way to reward people who are contributing to the common good. And I think that you know, if we do it for ourselves, then it might be easier to you know, come to other people and let them know we figured it out for ourselves. Because you know, we, we already hear people talking about licensing, coding on Ethereum, you know. Uh, so, go to, go to that house and join the raid guild. Uh, new DAO, uh, yeah. we can go just to experiment on that exact thing if you want to try to work together and work on how we can do that right now. What's the name of that? Great Great Guild. Great Guild. Great Guild. I think I, I, think I need don't to... call it a DAO. Yeah. He's called it a DAO. Yeah, I think we still have one more group, so this discussion is so amazing. What would be so cool if people have other thoughts that they want to contribute, please put it in the hack MD um, and we can continue this discussion. Um, but that's really awesome. Thank you everybody for participating. But we still have one more group and I want to make give them the opportunity to say all their things. So, uh, why DAOs? I mean, this is like, this is great that we're ending on number one, because it's basically like, what the fuck we're talking about. Right? Um, so come on up, announce yourself, um, and then we'll be the back to Thanks, guys. Uh, David, you could call me Dog. I like Dog more. Dog. So I keep my <laughs> identities in check. Dog. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we've been meandering between three different kind of things about the state of the DAOs right now. So we discussed a lot about Moloch DAO, uh, about uh, the Raid DAO, the Trojan DAO, all those. Um, we also talked a lot about the old failures of the DAOs, and we also talked about what DAOs could do if we just envision this great future where we don't have all the shit, we only have the DAOs, and they do what we want, even though we don't know what we want. Anymore. <laughs> what I'm saying is, it was a very difficult discussion to put into key points, so I'll just give you what we have. So, uh, first key point. We had a consensus that offline and online communities really require deep relationships, and most often uh, trust as well. 
and we weren't really sure if it is possible to just model the trust away and just find a mechanism that we can just not have the trust. So it's definitely something that any discussion about DAOs will be getting back into. Uh, we also found several use cases. Um, you can find them in the HackMD. I'll uh, just read some of them. Um, so one of the biggest use cases we had uh, was that DAOs allow, and that's a claim, uh, DAOs allow sidestepping the current structures that force organizations, um, if we just ignore DAOs um, as, a, as a structure, into this binary decision. Are we doing this for profit? Are we doing this not for profit? So our claim is we can use DAOs to kind of enable the spectrum in between these two and like uh, somebody from the middle uh, said a few minutes ago that we can also really decide whether we want to have the spectrum more on the funding side, more on the governance side, do we want to decentralize both, do we want to have this fluent and another claim that we, we make is that DAOs, because they are kind of shared software stack, enable fluency in all of that and this, this is what we believe is one of the key points for anyone who's investigating DAOs that this Fluency in the structures is one of the key, so to speak, selling points that we're all somehow subconsciously hoping for. Um, what else do we have here? Oh yeah, one of the typical use cases is uh, governance of decentralized projects using DAOs. You all know a few projects that simply are DAOs and they self-organize and I guess they don't give a rat's ass about legal implications because why would you? I, I, I'm with them, I'm with them. Um, what else do we have here? Yeah, uh, obviously, a new means to capture uh, value and enable value creation with less social and legal friction. I'm not really sure if this is the case in all cases. That's why we actually are having this workshop, I guess, to just enable like, the design patterns that will make it easier for future generations of conscious people uh, to design those just in a better way. And oh, a big claim we had, um, accessibility is still not very uh, equally distributed. I mean, there are populations that are not online, and there are populations that do not know that you can actually have an organization on the internet, there are people who are unaware that forums exist, you know. That's a problem that is just going to, in my opinion, personal opinion, solve itself with time, with the development of uh, the digital space in general. And one claim that we had as well is that DAOs provide a digital interface to a social process that often, or in the past, was hidden. So, for instance, there was this example of the, the Yang DAO, or if we just imagine we have a more uh, advanced version of that, which is actually a super PAC, you could kind of see what's going on uh, in, a, in a social system that you normally wouldn't even be able to see. You wouldn't be able to see results, outcomes of that system, but now you can just go online, or in the future you could go online and just check what's going on, who's voting, or maybe if you cannot attribute uh, individual identities to individual votes, you can still see what's going on without having to ask your immediate surrounding social network. So maybe we can actually gain some sort of super transparency that is not really something that humans have had in the past. And um, anything to add, guys? And gals? Oh no, the gal went to the I guess that's it mostly. Um, I think. Do we have some time for open discussion? Yeah. Anybody have any other questions? Why are we all here? Why why DAOs for you guys? DAOs, DAOs, DAOs. Some people are all about new um, uh, I'm sorry, we're here. Okay. Some people are all about new kinds of governance. I think governance is boring. What I care about is new kinds of money. Yes. Why can't allow you to do. Uh, tokens are great. Launch more tokens. Government sucks. <laughs> Solve more problems. That's, that's for me. Uh, so for me, why now is that you can, you can uh, continue around a shared mission that, that if you were a company with shareholders or non-profit, it's very hard to contribute. And because I come from an insurance background, and insurance as it is sucks because it's shareholder value maximizing. Whereas traditionally, it's always been about helping the community as a whole and providing the controls. But you know that structure is very limiting for it to like, scale up and compete with uh, sort of shareholder maximizing sort of structures. So um, it's a whether or not it can work, but it's exploring a new way to sort of. Uh, push a, a mission that benefits the society as a whole versus a one or a person or one entity. Yeah. I, I think that I think that also to discuss like the local community example. Uh, I, I believe that the DAO can be like a nice setup even if you have like a trust and you and then you have that knowledge between between people and common goal like to 
create mechanism where you can coordinate decisions and also make it from people from outside the bubble, if this is like a more general problem. I'll add the second one to how you said, um, which is basically uh, when you have a DAO, okay, it's really about uh, taking trust to the, to the next level. It's not only it has blockchain given us cryptocurrencies where you know, we have a trustless uh, monetary system, we, um, but now we can delegate the trust, you know, um, and we can see change in places where traditionally, you know, we are, we are not seeing change. Like, for example, my, my personal interest is in renewable energy. Okay, I'm very frustrated, okay, that. Um, I don't believe that the large corporations and the government will work together to transition us to 100%, okay? So what if we have, you know, a DAO that basically collects funds to give out loans for people who actually want to install solar panels, okay? And we don't compromise that, it's free from corruption, it's free from manipulation, shared vision, okay? And basically the money goes to where it is. Yeah, I'll yeah, a bit conscious that, like, for me, it's like seeing that this might be sort of, um, I don't know what to say, but it's kind of reinventing the wheel in some respects. And um, it was a, a good point just from uh, someone in our group who, yeah, worked um, already in organisations where they do have these mechanisms already. Um, I think it's cool for us to play with it, and that was a point we came to that it's kind of good to experiment and learn the lingo. And, and for me, it's always been great in doing that. And then when I go to an organisation and do the same thing, it's like, oh yeah, that's they were just doing that in a digital form. Uh, I just kind of wonder the advantages. So for some who are coming from the digital space, it gives them more exposure to these processes. And I think for those um, who aren't already involved in that process and can do that in a community project, say, they'll, they'll have their own personal stake. They'll just feel like they're part of the process. And if these digital tools can, like DAOs, can give a, a good visibility of where a vote goes and say, oh, I voted on that, and then now I have a fountain built in my community or something, um, that, that's the positive side to it. So it's a, uh, I'm sort of torn to say, like, there will be an element of re reinventing the wheel to get familiar and play with it a bit, but hopefully there is something that we're leapfrogging and we'll adding to it that is saying, here is the tangible benefits of doing this. Yeah. I think it's there, but we're just building it. Like, yeah, we as a so doubt. I love that. Guys, I think we're going to cut it right there. That was a great, uh, inspirational way to end with that. So thank you so much. Um, we are already at 5.30, so we've gone over. Thank you so much for spending this much time with us. Please add any thoughts to HackMD. Eve and I are going to be taking this and putting something out into the community. So also, uh, stay tuned. Uh, this is our Twitter. Um, but again, thank you guys so much for your great share. Thank you.